she's in a car and her husband came to pick her up from work or something and he's in silk pajamas and she has a camera angle on him and he just makes body parts jump. And yeah, women like to go for men that are good to their partners. Because it's like, if he's doing all these things for you, he's gonna do it for me too. There are some women out here that's willing to be the other woman. All you got is time to come and cater to this man who come, come in, lay it down for like, you know, a good couple hours and then he gonna go home. She like, this works for me. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. I had to jump on here real quick, okay, y'all? I just want to let y'all know. So I have a special guest with me because today's topic is crazy and we're going to jump into it. She's no stranger to the podcast, YouTube channel. Pretty far as community, let's show some love to Nyla Carter. Carter, how are you doing this evening, Nyla? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to talk about this interesting topic. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, let's talk about this. So, <laughs> backstory. I, I I get a video, and I don't know if you saw. The, I think we talked about that with the guy or whatever. He and he's talking about in this video how. The only reason why women want your man is because he, he has a woman, right? Mm -hmm. And I never, I was like, I never really looked at it like that. I was like, mm. so real quick. So is that true? It's definitely a thing. Uh, really? Women are, I have a lot of friends that have posted their partners and tagged their partners on mm -hmm. posts. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, women like to go for men that are good to their partners. Because it's like, if he's doing all these things for you, he's going to do it for me too, which is asinine, right? Because why would you say, it's just, it's just crazy, but it's the way of the, the world that we live in right now. Like it is definitely, most definitely a thing. That's why I post my partner, but he's never tagged. Really? That's, that's just so interesting to me. So kind of help me understand, though, because and I've, I've seen a post, I think maybe from uh, I won't say his name, uh, a prominent pastor. And he talked about that where there's women that's like, oh, he's a good husband. So it's easier for women to slide in a DM and be like, hey. But to me, I'm thinking, why would you want to? It's like that old saying, how you get them. Is how you lose them. Yeah. You know, so do women really think that they would benefit from this? So here's the real truth and that most people won't talk about. A lot of people don't believe in love. A lot of people don't believe that a man can be faithful. A lot of folks do not. They want and they speak on monogamy, but they don't feel like it's real. And so in their minds, he's not going to be faithful to me either way. If I get a man on my own, he's not going to be faithful to me. So I'm going to get somebody that knows how to treat his partner, that does all these things, right? He's doing it for her. He's going to do it for me too. And I'm okay sharing him. I'm not saying that that's what most women want, but a lot of people just don't believe that the love that they want and that they deserve, that is going to happen for them and so they find themselves either I, I don't need a man I don't need a man for nothing or they put themselves in a position where it's just like this is the best that I can get and I'm okay with that and that's just real yeah because I, I heard a therapist say the other day that people will most of the time people accept the love they think they they deserve mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, and people I'll, think that, again, a lot of women just think that, you know, that that person, that guy, that husband is doing right by his wife and all of those things. He's he'll probably going to cheat. And so I can benefit from that, meaning, you know, that side chick that's OK being the side chick. He's like, hey, if I can benefit from a situation, I want to benefit from someone. And I know he's doing these things for his wife. And I know he's probably not going to leave his wife, but 
I can benefit from this. He's going to treat me good. He's going to cater to me versus that, you know, that bum that doesn't know how to treat you, that dogs you, that, again, so it all depends on what you have access to, who you've dated, but we're not realizing as women, if you haven't healed from whoever that toxic person was, you're going to continue attracting men that are going to do the same thing, that's going to cheat, that's going to, you know, mistreat you, that's going to abuse your kindness and all of those things. And so again, until you heal and realize, hey, if God has something for me, whatever that may look like, until I get to a place where I'm just like, I'm wait, I'm away for whatever God has for me, even if I'm in my 50s, even if I'm in my 60s, we don't want to wait. We want to rush that process because we're tired of waiting. We're tired of being alone. So again, you hear that narrative, I don't need no man. They do, but they just don't feel like they can get the type of man that they really want. One that's faithful, you know, taking care of home, you know, a father or father figure to their children. They don't feel like it is going to happen for them. So this situation is just safer, right? Mm -hmm. I know he has, he probably not going to leave her, but it's just safer because I see you doing these things for her. I want to benefit from that. Mm. I mean, I can understand the, the logic behind it to a degree. Because you hear a lot of times where women say there's no available uh, bachelors, mm -hmm. you know, out here because a lot of them are behind bars or either, you know, they're kind of the same loving gender kind of thing. So it cuts into the the percentage of finding them a good man that's their own. So I can kind of understand. It's like, well, he's already a good man. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't have to do the work because another woman already like trained him and I'm throwing on my air quotes. Mm -hmm. So I can understand that. At the, end of, at the end of the day, though, is this something just temporal or is this something that they just really want? Or is this something that they maybe just want to kind of prove the point? Because I heard someone say that in a tweet. They said a lot of women want to prove the point that men aren't really good because he's going to cheat with the woman that slid in his inbox. So, again, you know, it, it, it's a it's a mixture of it because in their mind, men aren't good. Men are prone to cheat. Men cannot be monogamous. Men were not created to be monogamous. You will hear it across social media all of the time. And so it might be on some, I'm going to test it out, but also there's a hope that they will be treated with the same level of respect and, and reverence that, that the wife has, right? But you also know your place because you're not the wife. And so there, then there's this whole piece of side piece. And, but here's the thing. Some women are okay being in the side piece. It's not a thing for them. It's not, you know, like it, it's not looked at in a negative light. They're like, Hey, he got a wife. I don't care. Cause he gives me all these things, you know, the, the intimacy, the physical stuff that his wife may not want to necessarily do because she got to do it all the time. She got to cook for the kids, drop the kids off to school, to volleyball practice, to soccer, to football. Wife is doing all of these things. She may not be fulfilling his needs in other areas. And so in her mind, if I can do these things, I can get him to kind of, you know, benefit me in these ways. And once I pull him in with the, you know, the sexual strings, maybe he could leave his wife because I'm such a good woman and I can be such a good woman to her. So maybe initially it may not be um, to take him from her because you hear these situations over time and time again where the women take the husbands, you know, take the husbands from the wife and then they become the wife. And then they're mad when he does the same to, to them. It's like, sis, you don't, you didn't, you didn't see that. You you didn't connect those dots. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's what I was asking about the end result. Cause I was wondering like, yeah, this is really like a quick fix. This is something that's temporal that I just maybe want to feel important for, uh, for a season. Um, yeah. And it can be dangerous to know that there are some women out here that's willing to be the other woman. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, oh, I'm not trying to mess up your home. I just 
need what I need. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys like, really? You're not going to mess up my home? <laughs> you know? I'm not saying yeah. it's okay. I'm That's just saying. Like for men that are like that, right? They're like, you know your place? And you're going to give me all the things that she doesn't give me? <laughs> Bet. Mm-hmm. You go to Cheesecake Factory? Or you probably don't even want to get taken out. You cool with me just coming, just swinging through after I go to the gym? Cool. Because you're going to rub my feet and you're going to do all the things because you may not have kids. Or, you you know, you may be, you may be a, a career-focused or career-driven woman. You don't have children or these are things that you want, but you don't have or you never had it. And so now what you got? All you got is time. All you got is time to come and cater to this man who come, come in, lay it down for like, you know, a good couple of hours and then he going to go home. She like this works for me. Yeah, it's 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 scary out here. Mm-hmm. I and since I seen the the first video with the guy with the hoodie on, mm-hmm. I made a comment, and someone said, "Oh no, Sean, this is real. Let mm-hmm. let me show you." Somebody else said the same thing, mm-hmm. so they sent me this video, and I guess it was already kind of trending on Instagram or whatever. So I watched it. And I'm just thinking like, oh, my mind is blown because this lady is saying in the video, she's like, y'all coming for my man, y'all sliding in his DM. And, I, you know, I need to take him off my page because y'all just coming for my man, like the disrespect. So come to find out now, that's the mindset I'm I'm hearing it from. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm hearing it from that perspective. So I post on Twitter. Goes crazy. Over yeah. 11 million views. And people are like, no, nah, she tripping. She's tripping because there's a video of her and her husband. And he, I don't know if you've seen a video or whatever. I, yeah. I, yeah. So when they sent that video to me, which I didn't want to see anyway. They sent it to me and it gave me context. So I was just like, oh, okay. So really, this is kind of like a setup because... I guess he has an OnlyFans page now. And I'm thinking, okay, they just working in tandem. Oh, I didn't know that part. So, because I think I sent you the clip too, and you must have seen it after. Mm-hmm. So here's my with that. Nowadays, and I feel old. I feel like I'm the old person now because I'm just like, oh my God, like, am I one of those? Apparently I am. Couples share everything. Like the things that were intimate before when it comes to marriages, everybody knows. Like there are certain things that you should know. There's no way, you know, for the people who haven't seen the video, I'm not going, I'm not sure if you're going to tag it, but basically she's in a car and her husband came to pick her up from work or something and he's in silk pajamas and she has a camera angle on him and he just makes body parts jump. Ain't no way. You're opening the door. You are allowing people to see things that's none of their concern, but then you're upset when somebody step in. You left the door ajar, but you're mad when somebody steps in. Don't be mad, sis. You left the door open. You opened it. You prop. You put something. You prop the door so that it can stay open. It can just stay ajar a little bit. And now you're upset because women are throwing themselves at your husband. You did that. Yeah, right. So I was mm-hmm. thinking, I was like kind of siding with her at first. I'm like, oh yeah, so I yeah, that's that's trifling, that's wrong. So when I seen the video, I was, I was like, oh come on, you got to be kidding me, right? Um, so yeah, she she can't be mad at that. She can't. Um, right. I will say, as a man, and uh, here here's the I guess the funny part of the segment. So my response, because again, I'm looking at this as like a deer in the headlights because. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the other video yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I post videos or uh, pictures of my wife and I regularly on social media. And I was like, nobody really slides on my DM. I'm like, the the women that I know or you know followers, they respect the platform. I don't mm-hmm. have that issue, you know? So the one lady, she comes for me and she says, nobody wants you. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, even still, you don't know who I am. <laughs> what? And that and, and that response gets 
crazy views. I think it had like uh like twenty twenty five thousand views or something like that. Uh, oh. And and if any for those who know me, Brave Hearts community, for those who know me. You know, for people like that, I I love those kind of people because I won't go back and forth with you, but I can kill you with kindness and just be like, oh, you know, that's your opinion. And a lot of times, those be the very same people that uh go in my inbox and be like, oh, I had a question. Can you help me? <laughs> those are, those are, those are the ones. But again, we're all speaking from our experiences. Sometimes we see and we hear from trauma, right? And so you you don't know where she's coming from. So sometimes you just got to let people just you just go ahead and say what you got to say in the comments, boo. Say what you say in the thread. It's cool. I'm good. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. God bless. God bless. Because what can you say when somebody says God bless you? I know, right? Nothing. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't tripping. I you know I've been around a long time, so um, <laughs> there's nothing anyone can say to me. I've, I've been called worse or whatever, and I'm just like, you know. It, I just thought it was funny though, because people were commenting like, "Oh, he missed the point and everything." I was like, "It wasn't that I missed the point. I was just saying that because there were guys in the comments, or there were some women that were saying that as a man, very few men can resist temptation." And I was like, "You can. You just don't have to respond to it." Um. Because I think that's a kind of a crutch to to men as well. It's like, well, if they keep coming for him, then he's going to eventually crack. Mm -hmm. But if you know what you struggle with, if you know what you like, you need to stay away from. Mm -hmm. But again, that's my, that's my philosophy. It's is the men that they've experienced. That's who they are coming commenting on. That that's the experience that they've had. And so, if you've dated a man or been married to a man that has no self control, then yes, in your mind, your philosophy is men will eventually cheat. The theory that a man can be faithful to his wife 30, 40, 50 years, it may be foreign to you because you haven't experienced that. Whether it's personally, your parents, your aunts, you know, people that are, you know, within your village. You, If you haven't seen it, you don't think it's possible. So again, it kind of ties back into what I was saying initially. Women are engaging in these situations where they're okay with being the side piece, the side chick, because they don't think it's possible at all for a man to be faithful. Don't get me started on because of how they look. A lot of women Let's I'm talk bad. about it. I'm bad. And yeah. I can get any that I want. Youth, Beyonce, Janet Jackson, and I can go down the list, have all been women that have been cheated on. Looks don't, that's not going to secure it, baby. It's not going to keep a dude locked in. It is more than just the physical. And a lot of women feel like it's, it's the physical or their situations. It's like, oh, no, because I have the best this and I got the best that. So he ain't going to leave me. OK, girl. Mm -hmm. Sure. It goes over the head every time. It's just like, really? You're in your 30s and 40s and you think that by being physically attractive or you have good stuff that that's going to keep them. OK. Yeah. And, and that's a that's a common thread. Even in today's culture, I would imagine that people would have caught on by now. And don't get me wrong. It's yes. Attraction counts. Mm -hmm. That's not the totality of it, because I know and and I've heard a pastor say this before, which I, I just I use it all the time. I know a, a bunch of fine, a, a whole bunch of good looking, ugly women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you Ooh, know? Yes, yes. Beautiful on the outside, but. On the inside, it's just you know, there's there's guys out there that, like you said, Beyonce, the beautiful woman has been cheated on. There's guys out here, and I tell my single brothers this all the time. I, I don't know if we give attractive people, man or woman, if we kind of give them a pass because it's like you are attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, statistically, I've seen waitresses who are attractive they make more tips mm -hmm. so a lot of times we look at attractive people as just 
we give them a pass, we automatically think that they're going to be uh, good, smart, friendly, kind people. We just give them that pass. Mm-hmm. When there, when there's so much more to a person, and I only can imagine that those who are attractive, that like sometimes their struggles, because it's like I'm more than just this face, you know, or I'm more than just this body. Mm-hmm. Um, and just looking at it from a different perspective, because you know, there's some people that's just been blessed with beauty, you know. Yeah. Um, so I hear a lot, like a lot of people were saying in the comments, like her the the lady her husband oh he's so attractive like uh if you catch me on a bad day i'll slide in this dm mm. so i'm just like wow yeah <laughs> i mean to each, to each his own because i'm like why are they but you know whatever that's just my opinion but um and and, and it's so funny so since you just kind of touched on it even today in 2023, there's still that conversation of colorism. People make so many assumptions because I'm light skin and I have pretty hair and that I don't have. Oh, can you Two. People assume because, you know, I'm light skin and, you know, I have pretty hair that I don't face adversities that I don't have my own struggles. And the thing that I struggle with a lot of times is people see me and that I don't get, Oh, she's educated. She's a good mom. She's a good person. It's all these other things. And it's like, to your point, does it, does it matter? Does it matter? But maybe it's because I, you know, the, the physical that makes it more easy but at the end of the day, it's, it's it's not about the outside. It's about the inside. Because to your point, you can be beautiful. You can be drop dead gorgeous. And surprisingly, the most attractive women are the most insecure. You, Janet Jackson wrote her book. This was years ago. And she was doing an interview. I can't remember where. We know Janet. We love Janet. And she was talking about when she came out, you know, with the first, she dropped the first album. And she was like, she was so insecure about her body. And I'm like, girl, give it to me. Like, what? But again, on the outside, right? Looking, you know, us looking on the outside, we see something else. Her on the inside, she feels something else. So you can be gorgeous and you can have a horrible personality. And so again, it doesn't not because you're a baddie mean that you're gonna keep a guy. You have to that it has to match. The inside has to match the outside. Because some women are gorgeous, but they have bad attitudes, they got a dirty mouth. Like those things matter. That's what keeps or you know, not keep a guy around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's some guy, there's some quote unquote baddies that some guys are like. Will you please take her? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't ever want to see her again. Um, yeah. So it, it just yeah. depends. Yeah, Go it's ahead. and it's, it's it's really sad. Again, you know, in our thirties and forties, we're still we still think that shallow. Like you really think that's all it takes to sustain a relationship. So we look cute together. That's it. That's not it. It's so much more you know learning somebody's love language and learning how to their apologetic uh, love language and how to communicate those things it's so much deeper than just the aesthetics it it really is and people the fact that people don't get it it just it just blows my mind yeah it's it's unfortunate uh i i would like to say that at the end of uh, at the end of the day is it's about Having integrity, mm-hmm. being accountable, mm-hmm. and if you are in a committed relationship, just stay faithful. And if you know, because there were a lot of people saying that I don't post my man because I know how fine my man is, right? And 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 beauty is subjective for the most part. It is <laughs> right. You know, beauty is an eye of the beholder, uh, and you should think your your significant other or your spouse is attractive. Um. But I do it in a sense of that healthy marriages can exist, that we don't see it enough. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and that doesn't mean we don't have adversity. That doesn't mean we don't have issues. We don't, have, you know what I'm saying? It's it's about us working through things. It's about us getting up again after falling and being able to love each other again and being able to just rekindle things and start fresh. You know what I'm saying? So, because I'm just like, it's not about perfection. It's about growing into love, growing. It's about that consistency. Because a lot of times, again, with relationships, we really don't see marriages last as long as anymore. Well, I th- we don't see it last as long as um, people just aren't willing to to do the work, you know. Um, and I'm not just talking about situations of infidelity or because there's other why people don't make it. You mismanage money. You gamble. You know, you may not um, physically you know, have relations with someone, but you like to flirt with other women. Those are things that, hey, sir, this is not okay. But some women are okay with it. Some women, you know, just have this mindset of that's men. That's just how men are. That's how men are going to be. So again, it's, you know, to each his own, because what works for one is not going to work for somebody else. Some couples, yeah, I'm okay with my, with my wife having a work husband, you know, work husband, or she's okay with work wife. Like, no, boo, no. Mm-mm. Yeah, it happens. No, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, but you get to set those rules within your relationship. It's not about anybody else. And we have to get to a place where we need to stop oversharing. I almost cursed. We have to stop oversharing. There's things that nobody else should know about your marriage. However, he hangs you upside down or whatever, girl, girls. That's between. That's between you two. Mm-hmm. Why is on social media why is it a conversation between you and your friends Mm. oh just something should just be for those two people that are in it Mm. because times are good and you know when it's low it's them two that have to come together to figure it out and to make it work right because it's easy to post the highlights on social media you're not going to post when when y'all going through hell together but some people do. That's that's my point. Some people mm-hmm. do. Y'all overshare. This is not someone posted. I posted it this maybe like a year ago. She went on a live. This young lady went on a live and was just calling her man out about what he wasn't doing and how he's just trifling. And they just weren't communicating well. It wasn't that he wasn't being, um, you know, faithful and all those things. He just, oh, he got this on the floor and he left this and. And then got mad, come back, came back on another live because women slid in his DM. Because you are not grateful for what you have. That wasn't something to broadcast across social media. It just, it just wasn't. Just like with the Kiki and her her baby dad situation. That wasn't something that that's something that you needed to address with your woman. That's it. That did not need to be across social media. It's nobody's business but you two. Don't do that. And then then she started posting, like, how old are we? What are we doing? How does this benefit us? Because when I'm not agreeing with my partner, my first reaction is, is, is my reaction going to help or hurt us? Do I want to be in a relationship or do I want to be right? And a lot of people just want to be right. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if, if, if one person is winning then ultimately the relationship is losing mm-hmm. you know and I don't, I don't think a lot of people get that it's like well i feel good i won yeah but what about your significant other mm-hmm. you know so and, and that's a that's a that's another show within itself yeah totally hey, yeah i i just wanted to get on here and talk to you about this real quick because i felt like i had to vent mm-hmm and I needed somebody to keep it real. So I'm glad that you took this time out of your day to uh, talk to me about this topic. Can you let everyone know how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, I am on IG and Facebook at Nala Carter. Uh, I focus on people that have been through divorce and um, on unhealthy relationships and how to heal from it. Because again, guys, if we're not healing and we go into new relationships, we're taking that baggage that we had from the previous one into the new one. And you can't really start a new if you have all this stuff that you're carrying. So yeah, be sure to follow me. Yeah, for sure. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. 
make sure you go hit that subscribe button. And if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure that you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd love to hear from you. We gave a free Amazon gift card away not too long ago. So we're going to do that again. Uh, put your name in a drawing. So make sure you leave a rating and review. This is Sean Heineman with special guests. <laughs> okay. Nyla Carter. <laughs> All right, Brave Arts community, take care. <laughs> hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.